Good evening. It's been roughly eight months since we've seen any major work being done on the new RCMP detachment in Lloydminster, but this week we're seeing some promising signs. Construction is resuming. Crews are on site working on the exterior of the property. Very important to uh, you know get the sidewalks and the concrete in, uh, get it paved, hopefully have it landscaped. Then we can continue to work and concentrate uh, on the inside of the building throughout the fall and winter. The original contractor Dowland Contracting is in receivership. The bonding company has been working on finding a new general contractor, but the city is not yet able to identify whether one has been chosen. Still working with the bonding company to go through the, the formal process of uh, uh, getting documentation in place. Uh, really hope that uh, in the near future that can be made known, made known to the public. No timeline for completion has yet been set. Obviously look forward to the uh, completion of the project and uh, allow the RCMP to, to make that move from the old detachment into the, this new uh, beautiful facility that they will <clears throat> be able to work out of, um, which was a little bit overdue, so uh, we definitely want uh, them moved as soon as possible. Stasek says we should expect to see more and more crews on site in the near future. RCMP are still searching for a 38-year-old man missing from the Pierceland area since last Thursday. Yesterday, a rescue team conducted ground and air search around the Big Island Cree Nation but failed to come up with any clues. Randy Wallace George was last seen wearing blue jeans, a gray t-shirt with black stripes on the sides, a black baseball cap and black shoes. He's described as being 5'8", 220 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. George was last seen on the Big Island Lake Cree Territory walking north on Highway 21. Police say this has been a difficult investigation as George doesn't have a cell phone or any credit cards to track. Now, if you have any information on his whereabouts, please contact the Pierce Land RCMP. That's at 306-893-3330 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477. A local musical talent is getting a chance at his big break. Sam Landell is the Big Valley Jamboree in August as part of the Homegrown Talent Competition. As Bart Padiasik reports, it's also a chance to play on the main stage in front of tens of thousands of people. Run my fingers through his mane. Strumming his guitar at his parents' house near Lloydminster, this is where you can normally find Sam Lundell. The teenager's life revolves around music, ever since being classically trained at a young age. I started with classical violin for probably the first four years of my, of my music career, that's what I did. And then I got, into, I got into classical piano, and then I just started singing. And he hasn't stopped since. The 16-year-old says he draws inspiration from various genres as he develops his personal style. My main, my main focus is, is around a really, it's kind of this fusion of, um, of rock, alternative rock. Um, and yeah, it's a, I mean, I, li I live around Lloyd, so you're going to have country influences, right? Sam's mother, Terry, has been supporting Sam and his craft ever since she bought him his first violin at five years old. She says he never takes a day off. It doesn't matter where we are, as soon as we get in the house, if he hasn't had an instrument in his hand, he's in the music room. Nobody has to ask where he is. After submitting a YouTube audition tape, he was selected to be part of this year's homegrown talent competition. Performing August 4th at noon, finalists will be chosen by a combination of judge and audience voting. I know there's lots of people in the, in the area, in Lloydminster, and if they realize that if they get out and support Samuel, that makes his chances of making it to the finals all that much greater. And the grand prize? A chance to perform between Big and Rich and Tim McGraw on the big stage. That'd be, that'd be ginormous. I mean, Big and Rich actually is one of, the, one of my favorite country groups. Um, my brother bought, uh, bought their Horse of a Different Color album when I was, I think, seven or eight, and I remember jamming to that in his truck. And it would be a big step, especially for a teenager with aspirations of becoming a major recording artist one day. Being able to feed off the crowd and love being able to, you know, my songs for me are, are they're a part of my life. They're a part of my, they're part of my journey, they're a part of my heart, and just being able to share that with people and and see and see how that touches them, you know. I will share the sin and struggles I have carried all these years. Bart Pediasek, New Cap News.
Well, they're portable, found only in the summer, and offer food you don't usually find at fast food restaurants. Food trucks are mostly in big cities like Edmonton and Calgary, but as Anna Stanislaw explains, the food truck frenzy has just begun here in the border city. I'm going to get the bacon cheddar burger with no tomato. It's fresh and the menu changes often. And for these customers, it's a quick way to grab lunch. It's better tasting, better variety, because it's not the same thing over and over and over. So nice. it's a nice change. I don't know if restaurants have real food anymore, so I like going here. Spuds began in the border city in May under new ownership, offering everything from gluten-free battered shrimp to bannock burgers. And so far, the support has been overwhelming. I have been thinking about owning a food truck for the last yes. couple of years, as it is an emerging trend in Canada right now. So we decided to take it over, and it's been quite successful so far. Crystal Daniel, a school teacher, she says she sees Lloydminster growing every year and believes there's a need for food trucks in town. We want to bring something to our community that isn't quite here. We're, we're starting off small this year with our menu. We're doing hand-battered fish and chips, homemade fries. We, we punch all the potatoes ourselves and then we offer good quality products. And for those thinking of setting up a food truck right here in the border city, proper permits are required. You just got to jump right in. You've got to do a lot of research. You've got to learn a lot yourself about electrical work and plumbing and food costs and what are the demands and needs of, of the people and of the city. It's a lot of hard work. It You're going to be putting in long hours, yeah. long days. As everyone knows, it's hard to find staff in Lloydminster as it is, let yeah. alone for a three-month job. So if you are thinking of opening up a mobile Location. vending unit, uh, make sure you have staff. Now the food trucks are here only until the fall season starts, but it's a sure thing they'll be back next summer. Anna Stanislaw, New Cap News.